This video will do calculations with a Carnot engine at first, an ideal heat engine, uh, calculating the efficiency based on the temperatures that are given, and then we'll calculate the work done by the engine, and then we'll switch to a real heat engine and uh, take a look at its efficiency and work done. So this particular Carnot engine, in this ideal engine that's our best possible heat engine, has a hot reservoir at 250 degrees Celsius, cold reservoir at 100 degrees Celsius. Energy leaves the hot reservoir is captured by the working machinery uh, between the two reservoirs, delivers useful work, and then some energy is rejected to the cold reservoir. In doing this calculation, the efficiency calculation involves 1 minus T sub C over T sub H. These are single T uh, variables here. You must be in the Kelvin scale to get the correct answer. You cannot do this calculation in the Celsius scale. You must have Kelvin temperatures for this formula to work correctly. So our first task is to find the Kelvin temperature. It's easy. I'm just uh, rounding off a little bit here, but add 273 to the Celsius number. That produces the Kelvin number. So the hot, hot uh, reservoir has a temperature of 523 Kelvin. The cold reservoir, 100 plus 273, it's at 373 Kelvin. I can now use my uh, formula for efficiency for the Carnot engine. I have Kelvin temperatures. We substitute those in. You ought to check with your calculator. Uh, I came up with 0.287 or 28.7 percent. Now the question is, how much work is done by this Carnot engine? Again, we're dealing with an ideal, best possible case engine here with these temperatures given. Well, we have the efficiency, and the efficiency is work over Q sub H. We were told that 350 joules of energy leave the hot reservoir, so we were given Q sub H. So our equation here only has one unknown. Let's go ahead and calculate. 0.287 for the efficiency, that's from part A of this problem. 350 joules given for Q sub H. Multiply both sides by 350 joules, and we find a work of 100 joules for this particular heat engine. Now, what is the work done by a real heat engine that has an efficiency of just 60% of the Carnot efficiency? This engine has friction and uh, energy losses uh, in the uh, movement of the energy from the hot reservoir into work. Some of that energy that we normally would pick up with the Carnot engine is lost. So our efficiency is just 60%. Well, to find the efficiency of this real heat engine, we just multiply the Carnot efficiency of 0.287 by 0.6. It's a 60% of the Carnot efficiency. Our, our real heat engine here then has an efficiency of 0.1722. I'm not rounding off here just to uh, you know, not create a round off error in the problem. We'll round off the final result. So the efficiency is... Uh, uh, 0.1722. Again, the energy leaving the hot reservoir, uh, assuming this is the same for this engine and the Carnot engine, 350 joules. Our work done now is 0.1722 times 350, or 60.3 joules. This should not be a surprise, since we had 100 joules of work done in the uh, uh, Carnot engine. We're getting less work done for the real heat engine. It's not as efficient. So 60.3 joules of work uh, being accomplished by this real heat engine. But problems like this, if you're told the efficiency in terms of the Carnot efficiency, you must work out the Carnot efficiency first. We had the temperatures given, but so once we convert the temperatures to Kelvin, we could find the Carnot efficiency, efficiency of the Carnot heat engine, and then just 0.6 of that efficiency gives the efficiency of this heat engine. Efficiency is the useful work that's done divided by the energy available from the hot reservoir. So 60.3 joules. Uh, create your own practice problems and ask your instructor some questions.